everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Vanilla Sky. Just finished watching it, my Amazon Prime free membership is about up, so I'm about off of there. I'm not out of movies to watch on there anyway. Obviously I like doing the movies more than TV shows because I can watch for two hours and have some content on. So you know how we do it, I mean first of all my constitutional rights are being violated, it has destroyed all of my businesses, I cannot start a career or family because of it, I'm asking somebody to please help me. And so I do everything I can. I've tried. I'm applying to jobs. I'm doing everything I can to feel like a human being. And the answer is just act like Brad doesn't exist. So if someone could please, you know, uh, uh, uphold their legal obligations or just simply have the decency to treat me like a human being, I'd really appreciate it. But regardless, I'll break down another movie because I will never have a career or family. So might as well, might as well try. You gotta try, but when you're skate good at Alice's side, there's nothing you can do besides get blamed for it. Blame the victim, and that's it. And so, I'll give you my overall impressions and grade after giving you the logistics of the movie. If you have not seen the movie, would like to, based or not based on my recommendation, you're going to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development and many similar mo movies or major themes that come to mind. So, overview. Tom Crew and Cameron Crowe reunite after Jerry Maguire for Vanilla Sky, the story of a young New York City publishing magnet who finds himself on an unexpected roller coaster ride of romance, comedy, suspicion, love, sex, and dreams in a mind blowing search for his soul? Google says why to watch a mind bending romantic thriller about a man who has everything until a car accident changes everything. It was did 203 million at the box office. 74% liked it on Google, 4.5 out of 4.5 on Amazon, 43% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 6.9 out of 10 on IMVD. Nice. So overall, um, it says it was a thriller sci-fi, 2 hours and 16 minutes, released in 2001, rated R. No, uh, I didn't like it. I thought it was off-putting. Um, the overall, we'll get to the motif, like the major point of the movie, at, you know, at the end, the plot synopsis, that I didn't think the, the, the theme or the motif was interesting whatsoever. Um, for the majority of the movie, you're just like, what is going on? And then at the end, it's not even like a good reveal. There's not, again, nothing in the writing script that was just like interesting or intriguing. And so um, there were, again, just sort of like a romance story and sort of just like, just a lot of nothing. It's supposed to be like a psychological thriller, I guess, but then it didn't work for me. I'm gonna give it a D. I do not recommend this one. I thought this was just off-putting. But, so if you've not seen the movie and would like to, you're gonna shop the video because we will be discussing the plot now. So the movie opens up, you have David Ames played by Tom Cruise. Um, he is in bed with Cameron Diaz, who is playing a character called Juliana Gianni, and basically, he says like an alarm clock saying, wake up, wake up. There's a first scene where he's like driving his car, and there's nobody else on the road, and he gets out of his car and starts, you know, starts running, and what really is he wakes up is out of a dream, and so, at the beginning of the movie, you meet... Um, he's also, you gotta, you gotta get these like background narrating scenes where he's getting interrogated, which looks like a police station or something, by this guy named McCabe. And so he's kind of like talking, he's a psychologist talking to um, David Ames just about um, why, like, why he was running down the street. Regardless, he's got, a, he's, he's got some friends with benefits going on with Giuliano and Gianni. Um, and he runs, so his dad has this big publishing company. They own a couple magazines, or a couple of this, a couple of that. And the dad and the mom gets killed in a car accident, so now he becomes, he, he is now running this publishing company. And so the board members, he calls them the Seven Doors, because again, they just, they're just bitter that he got 51% of the controlling uh, of the company. There's a, a, a minor role in a, uh, a lawyer named Thomas Tipp. Um, he doesn't really play much till later. I did say John Galecki, the, uh, Leonard from uh, the Big Bang Theory show, which was widely popular, was in this movie. I didn't recognize him at all. But, so, he goes, he has a couple board meetings. He's going to this office. He goes in there. Um, and then the first kind of thing, big thing that happens is uh, they, have a, they have a house party or a birthday party for David. And he's like 33. Because this movie was released in 2001. And so I think it's mo you know, modern setting New York for 2001 is the setting of the movie. And so, they have this big house party, um, you get a couple scenes going into the office, um, but he has this big house party, he's got a good friend, Brian Shelby, um, and again, David is played by Tom Cruise, he's the guy that's got it all, the, gets all the women, has the big company, blah, 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 type of characterization. 
And then Brian Shelby and David Ames' relationship was decent at the beginning. But again, I just didn't... No, no part of this movie did I enjoy, to be honest. And so they're at this um, party, and David and Brian really liked Juliana Gianni or something, um, or at least had a crush on her or something. And so they're kind of like playfully going back and forth about that. Brian also brought another girl named Sophia, played by Penelope Cruz. And so very uh, instantly David and Sophia start flirting and right, right in front of Brian. He's super stoked about his date that he brought to the party. But so they're also, um, uh, Juliana, Juliana is also there kind of like staring at him or kind of like stalking David. And so Sophia and David run upstairs um, and then they just kind of like talk, share a drink or whatever, and then um, she, she goes and leaves, I believe. And so you, know, you, you, you do have a bunch of jumping around scenes, and then you have more scenes with McCabe where he's in there getting interrogated by some, about something, about a murder, about something. And so you, you're not sure if it's a, it's, a, if it's a head timeline, like if it's a flash forward, you're just not really sure the chrono, chronological order of the scenes. It's supposed to be a psychological thriller. It wasn't very thrilling, and the, the end reveal was not anything interesting. So regardless, they either just you know talk and laugh, and, you know, initial first kind of date type of deal, and maybe share a kiss. Not only they even kiss yet, but now that now they start hanging out. And so she's a dancer. He runs this company, um, and they they uh, she comes over one day, or they're hanging out one day, and then they, they paint each other pictures. They're like draw each other pictures of each other, portraits, and um, uh, they, they flirt a little bit. And David is like, uh, you know, a lot of sexual tension between David and Sophia. And he's like, you know, I'll sell you this picture for a kiss. And so she originally kind of denies, and then she's like, you know, come in here, I have to tell you a secret, and then kisses him. And so now, now the the romance is flourishing. So he, he leaves her house. And outside pulls up Juliana Gianni. And so she, she was like, convinces David to get in the car with him. Um, he gets in the car with him, or with her. And then she starts driving. And then she starts driving and acting erratic. She's like, you know, we had sex four times. You were in me. I swallowed your load. How can you not love me, David? That means something. And so then she gets really, you know, really erratic. She's swerving through traffic. Um speeds up and just launches over this bridge. And so the, and at this point in, in, the, in, a ter in the interrogation scenes with McCabe, he's talking about, you know, killing somebody, like someone's been murdered or whatever, and he thinks he's killed his girlfriend. And you're just, you're, you're not sure like what scenes are supposed to be real or what scenes are supposed to be dreams. So there's a couple dream scenes as well. And so regardless, they launch off of this, this cliff or this bridge. You know, it's just like an over, a city overpass, and they fall down on two stories, whatever, and it's wreck their car. And so, now David Ames' face is very is very mutilated. And so you learn that Juliana Gianni died in a car accident. And so she is dead, and David is severely maimed. He goes into a, a, a coma for I don't know, three weeks. He has a bunch of facial reconstructive surgeries on him. And so now his face is, his face is rather deformed, and they... In a couple of tense scenes with this doctor because he's rich, he can afford the best people in New York. And he's like, you know, I want my face to get fixed. And they basically give him this like rubber prosthetic mask to like both shield the, the deformities and also like help uh, regenerate the cells. And so now he's wearing that mask and he goes and approaches Sophia at the, um, at the ballet center or wherever she's dancing. And they kind of reconnect, and Sophia's like, you, you can tell she's kind of like off put or just like doesn't know what to do. And she agrees to like meet up, and they're gonna go out out on the town, you know, on, on the weekend. And so David is rather, you know, ashamed or embarrassed about his face. And he, he, he when he first approaches Sophia, he does not wear the mask. But then they agree to meet up at a, at a club or just like go out for a night. And uh, Sophia brings along Brian Shelby. You know, just remember, they were friends initially before the party where David and Sophia started to hit it off. And so David shows up to the club with his mask on, and they're all just like, take that thing off, man. And he gets kind of wasted with the bartender, and Sophia's just kind of dancing with other dudes, and, and they're just kind of off-put by um, him wearing his mask. And so 
Brian calls him out like, you know, we, we will miss the old, we old David. It's about, you know, a month or so has passed since the, since the accident. And so he gets wasted, really drunk. He goes back, um, both Sophia and Brian leave, and then he collapses, uh, just drunk on the sideway, sidewalk and falls asleep. So the next morning, Sophia wakes him up, and it was like, you know, again, you have a couple other scenes where it's like he's, he, he envisions or dreams that Brian and Sophia hook up, but Sophia wakes him up the next morning, and it's like, you know, back to like, you know, really, really into him. And so you have that, um, they start dating again, um, Sophia kind of has like a purple mask now, um, not, not too much relevance with the business, again, there is talk in the Seven Dwarfs as board of this company that he has. The main focus is on the character relationships, but he has to fight for the, the business and like, you know, uh, to maintain his 51% control, he has to, you know, demonstrate mental acuity and not be incompetent, which, you know, finding a, a business executive that's enragingly incompetent, that's never, that's, that's the biggest falsity of this whole movie. But regardless, um, now they start dating and, um, more intense scenes or just uh, flashbacks or cut through scenes so being interrogated by McCabe and but now Sophia and David are together and they're living very very happily and so um, he, he basically Sophia convinces us to take his mask off and you see that his face is fully now healed so again you're not sure like what exactly is going on did it actually work did this is a dream what's this what's that but he's, his mask is now off and his face is perfect and so they're hanging out, you know, they're, they're living a life, you know, they, they go to bed one time and then, or one time, uh, Sophia walks in the kitchen and comes back out and it's Juliana or Juliana. Yeah. And then, you know, they're in bed together one day and it's, uh, you know, he's, he's sleeping with Sophia and he, she has a, there, there's some topless scenes, but she has like a little mole on one, one of her breasts. And so he like, he just keeps going back and forth of like, being with uh, Sophia, then it turned out to be Juliana, like, like they're literally having sex, and then he like initiates sex with Sophia, and then looks down, and it's Juliana, and stuff like that. And so he's he's not he's, he's not sure exactly what's going on. There's another scene where, but he kind of like freaks out, and and then kind of like suffocates. I think, I think like suffocates, yeah, suffocate because he's been, he's 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 having sex with Sophia's girlfriend or wife or whatever, and then it turns into Juliana. And then he like suffocates her, and then that's when you see like, the mole on her breast that was on Juliana's or Sophia's. And so that happens. There's another scene where he goes to a bar, um, and I think I think it's the, the scene right after that one. But he goes to a bar, and there's just some guy approaches him. And he's like not in the mood to talk, and the guy like knows who he is by name. He's like, you know, you control everything. Everyone in the bar listens to you, and so he just like does that, and everyone just like stops and looks at him. So you're, now you're, you're aware it's either a dream or some sort of sci-fi aspect going on here. And so he kind of leaves there. You get more, more flashback scenes with McCabe asking, you know, can you identify who the guy in the bar was? He keeps asking about the guy in the bar. Um, and then you go to, basically you go to um, this place. There's, there's this called Life Extension. And so you get introduced to like, you know, cryotherapy to freeze your body and get rejuvenated later, which, spoiler alert, Peter Thiel, it's never gonna work, buddy. You know, you know, you get one life to live and you destroyed mine and ruined all of history. So just keep doing your things, everybody out there. Just lie, cheat, and steal. That's all anybody does. And um, so, so you get this cryo that it's run by this chick named Rebecca. It's kind of a strange looking person. What was her name? Tilda Swinton, kind of a strange looking human being. I don't know. I don't care. It'd be nice. <laughs> but you go there. She's running the place. Um, and then you see she like, gives a demonstration. He's with McCabe. He get, she gives a demonstration. And then he sees the guy um, that from the bar. And he's labeled as tech support. So now you're not sure if he's in the life extension thing. You're getting way more uh, convinced that he is. Um, and he kind of like... Uh, because he, he goes, they go to the life extension place from like this like police office place with McCabe. So it's like at this point you're not sure if it's a police, or you're definitely sure it's either a dream or just some sort of sci-fi aspect. And so he basically um, had signed some paper to give give um, his body to science or something. 
and then he ends up meeting the guy, um, I think he like runs out of that office, but then he, he meets the guy again, the um, Edmund Ventura, or it's Edmund, I can't tell, it's, the last name is cut off at V-E-N-T-U, Noah Taylor is also kind of a strange looking dude. And regardless, um, he meets back up with that guy, and he was like, you know, you, you've controlled it all, they're going up this elevator, and um, he's like, you know, uh, David's like, you know, t tell me what really, really happened. And so what ended up happening, kind of the resolution of the movie, is that after that night that he went partying, um, he, so he never saw Sophia again, he had just woken up, his face was still deformed the entire time. Um, he ended up did winning, um, the, the control of the company, convincing them that they are, um, that he's competent with his lawyer, Thomas Tipp, who was really fond of his father or something. And after that, he got just got really depressed that he couldn't um, be with Sophia anymore. And um, basically just overdoses on pills. At the, he, he, preserve, or he signs up for this life extension, signed over his body, and then um, decided to overdose on pills or something. So he takes a bunch of pills, kind of um, gets picked up in a black body bag by these life extension people. And so they, they've frozen his body. And everything since the um, since the the night out drinking with Brian and Sophia was was just his imagination, like him willing it into existence, and kind of just getting his memories and subconscious mixed up between the, the Sophia and Juliana. And so he didn't like actually kill anybody in the movie. He just like again had his memory wiped and body preserved. And so basically, that's what you learn. And that's really, again, the motif is just like life extension. And it's like, okay, no. <laughs> it, was not, it, was, it was not a good psychological thriller. Like, you know, like Inception was or just any other things where it's like, it's, you're not sure what's going on in a movie and the resolution is really powerful or really like, aha, wow, gotcha moment or just something new or novel and this just was not it. And so he basically has one more decision. He can either stay in the dream world, kind of, and just will anything he wants into existence or he could... Uh, get revived back to life actually and so again after like a severe overdose it would probably cause some organ failure which probably wouldn't be good for rejuvenation later in life but regardless is now you know he has one more scene with Sophia and he's like you know a bunch of time has passed so Sophia's biologically dead and he's frozen and so the choice he has with this life extension thing is he can either stay in the dream or jump off the building and go back to a real life somehow and so obviously he chooses to jump off the building um, and, you know, in this dream world and then he like hits the pavement and then his eyes will open up and he's back in real life now. And so that's the end of the movie. Then you get the end credits. So it's literally just like the motif for the major themes was just life extension and I thought the presentation of the script um, was not good at all. So overall I thought this one was off-putting. I do not recommend this one. Again, if you want to go check it out, check it out. But... That's what I thought of the movie Vanilla Sky. So again, somebody please help me. I, I really, I am so fucking desperate to feel financially stable. So fucking desperate. My entire adult life has been this shit. My entire life has been profound negligence and abuse. Please, somebody help me. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.